Okay. All right, good morning, everybody. Liz Lanfing here. Welcome to Engaging Pittsburgh. It's all about the People Award Ceremony. Before we begin this morning, I'd just like to go over a couple housekeeping items. The first one, uh, to cut back on the background noise, we have muted everybody upon entrance. You can unmute um, at certain points throughout today's ceremony to, to engage in some Q&A sessions and interact with our uh, nominees. If you're calling in for audio, you can press star six to mute or unmute yourself. And you can always utilize uh, the chat to engage in real time today. And to access the chat, you'll need to click on the icon that looks like a little text bubble at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we will be recording today's session. Um, as with all of our programs, we, we know there's a lot of information being presented in a, a short amount of time. So we wanna make sure you have the opportunity to absorb as much as possible. All right, so let's get this celebrated started and uh, let's start to learn about all these great people initiatives taking place within our region. At this time, I would like to invite our current president, Lisa Petro, to the screen. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Liz, and welcome, everybody. It's an exciting morning today for our virtual event. So as Liz mentioned, I'm the current Pittsburgh Human Resources Association president and it's genuinely a pleasure to be the virtual MC for the 2021 Pittsburgh Human Resources Association Engaging Pittsburgh Innovative People Practices Awards Ceremony. Um, as your host, I have the honor of recognizing the finalists and announcing the winners and keeping the program on schedule. So we are going to get started. So the Engaging Pittsburgh Innovative People Practices Awards are a fresh take on a reciprocal relationship between employers and employees, more commonly known as engagement. Employee engagement is what happens when companies win over the hearts and minds of employees in ways that lead to extraordinary effort and positive results within the workplace. The workplace, as many of you know, um, here best is changing and engagement strategies are changing right along with it. And the evidence of that can be seen here today with the dynamic finalists that we have and that we're going to recognize. Anyone involved in employee engagement knows that conventional wisdom has been turned on its head by a newly plugged in and charged up generation of workers and engagement is occurring across business units inside organizations. We're excited to share the finalist stories and unveil the winner with you this morning. And now I'm going to actually turn it over to Brenda Toma, um, who is my co-host for our virtual event today. Brenda? Thank you very much, Lisa. Hi, I'm Brenda Toma and I am the VP of Pittsburgh Human Resources Association Signature Events. It is my pleasure to be the co-host here with Lisa. The many volunteers that our organization has that contribute to engaging Pittsburgh really is important because they give selflessly their time, their resource, and their energy. And we're very fortunate that we have such a broad group of individuals that help us with this very important engagement. These people help us identify our finalists, raise funds, market the event, and, do, and complete our outreach activities. So now I'd like to take a few minutes to recognize the committee and the members of our group who have helped us judge this prestigious award. So to the top right, we have Al, Alan Boyland, who is our chair of our social media. We have Lisa Petro, who is our president. We have Lenore Seifer, who is our president elect. We have uh, Chanel DeVito, who is our director at large. Karen Lindsay, who is also a director at large. Christine Irwin, who is our treasurer. And of course, myself. Hard work alone really isn't enough to keep uh, this going. So to do this, we need some financial support. And this year we have very generously been supported by the following organizations. Gallagher Benefits, University of Pittsburgh Executive NPA Program and Center for Executive Education, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and Monster, Centric, and last but not least, VBA, so throughout this program, we're going to be raffling off some prizes that have been 
given to us from these generous supporters. So make sure you're paying close attention. So when your number is generated, you are aware and you win this prize. Again, thank you for joining. I'm going to now turn it over to Lisa. Okay, thanks Brenda and thanks to everyone who's helping to make today possible. So it's time to hear um, about what's happening within our nominated companies. Um, this, this year, we looked at nominations that focused on recognition within three main categories. They were intended to inspire and drive creativity when organizations are considering, um, when they're considering to submit that uh, nomination to us. First, second, and third place honorees will be announced today. And all the nominations fell into one of the following categories diversity and inclusion, learning and development, and our leader of the year. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Brenda. Okay, so the moment that we've been waiting for, who are the 2021 Engaging Pittsburgh Innovative People Practice Award finalists and winners? Our company finalists are Arconic, Fab Inc. and Spark 360, Black Box, Double Tree Pittsburgh Green Tree, Edgar Snyder and Associates, Quick Med Claims, Urban, Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh, and Vibrant Pittsburgh. Our Leader of the Year nominees are as follows Executive Coach Sonia Lynn Gartside, Melissa Miller. EVP, she's a Chief HR Officer of Arconic, and Cheryl Paxton Hughes, Chief Operating Officer of Edgar Snyder and Associates. So let's begin by inviting our first company finalist representatives to the stage to discuss their initiatives. At this time, I would like to invite Megan McKay, the Global HR Director from Arconic, Arconic to the virtual stage. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. So thank you so much for this opportunity to present why I nominated Arconic Corporation. You may be familiar with our predecessor, Alcoa, probably not as familiar with Arconic. We are headquartered in Pittsburgh and we're a global provider of aluminum sheet, plate and extrusions, as well as innovative architectural products. We have more than 13,000 employees in 10 countries around the world. And locally, we employ about 850 employees in our corporate offices in the North Shore, our R&D facility in New Kensington, and our Conyer Building Systems facility in Cranberry Township. So what makes Arconic an exceptional employer? After launching this company on April 1st, 2020, just as the impacts of the pandemic were getting all too real, our CEO and executive leadership team, including Melissa Miller, who you'll meet shortly, not only took swift action to keep employees safe, they continued to focus on cultivating a culture that advocates for inclusion, diversity, and social equity as one of our highest priorities. Led by our CEO, Tim Myers, we launched our Grow Together campaign in August of 2020 to engage employees to take action. Our goal was to reach 2000 actions in the form of a learning activity, a donation, or a volunteer activity. And as an added incentive, our six employee resource groups selected six organizations that would receive $50,000 each in grants from the Arconic Foundation if our goal was met by December 1st. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Vice President of Inclusion and Diversity, Tracy Husted, Vice President and Treasurer of the Arconic Foundation, Ryan Kish, and Vice President of Corporate Communications, Tracy Gliozzi, and our Communications Specialist, Ella Coopermink. Together, they organized the campaign and tracked our progress towards our goal. And let me tell you about that progress. Our campaign drove more than 2,200 actions and more than $100,000 in personal donations from our employees. And as a result, the foundation awarded a total of $360,000 in grants. What's unique about the Grow Together campaign is that it meets the employees where they are on their journey rather than trying to establish a one-size-fits-all program that only addresses the workplace. 
It offers a way for employees to choose their own actions to further their education, their investment of time or resources, and ultimately their personal commitment to build a more inclusive, diverse, and equitable environment, not just where we work, but in our communities and wherever we are. Earlier this month, we kicked off our 2021 Grow Together campaign, and this year we're doubling our goal to 4,000 actions. I have no doubt that our Conic employees will exceed this goal and we will continue to grow together. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Megan. So now we would like to transition to Bab in Spark 360. At this time, I would like to invite Riley Limina from Bab and Amanda Kanga from Spark 360 to speak. Great, thank you very much, Brenda. Good morning, and a thank you to the leadership team at the PH PHRA for hosting such an important recognition event to honor the region's finalists. And like everyone else, I wanna congratulate all the companies on the call today who are engaging in innovative people practices. My name is Amanda Kanega, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Spark360, which is headquartered here in Pittsburgh, and we recently merged with Empower360, a direct primary care provider to create a new model in healthcare. This past year, the pandemic has been tough for so many businesses requiring leaders to find innovative ways to stay connected with so many employees working remotely. <clears throat> Spark Pittsburgh just kicked off its sixth year as a social impact campaign that focuses on three main areas, fitness and health, leadership development, and community engagement. For so many companies and individuals in the community, we have served as a backbone to hundreds of HR leaders as a consumer tech platform to drive employee engagement through digital health challenges that connect employees, foster team building, increase resiliency, drive productivity, and overall improve healthy habits. We have supported hundreds of companies in partnership with BAB Incorporated to build out best-in-class people-first virtual programs on our tech platform built by a team of health and behavior change experts. Now we also have an annual calendar of events and we continue to roll out new tools and features that are free to all the companies in our community. We are here to help local companies build more innovative people practices all year long. And the most exciting part of our program is that winning companies in the Fit City Challenge receive a free commercial to highlight their innovative people practices in a commercial on WPXI. So our platform is highly trackable. We can see all the engagements on the back end in terms of who's participating. So those with the most participation and the most fitness minutes are rewarded and recognized. Now I would like to introduce our partner at BAB Incorporated, Riley Lamina, who is going to tell you about all the positive impact Spark Pittsburgh has had on local companies through engaging its employees. Awesome, thanks so much, Amanda. My name is Riley Lamina with BAB Incorporated. I'm honored to be a part of such an important celebration today. Thank you to the PHRA for hosting such a spectacular event. So what's really so exciting about the Spark Pittsburgh Fit City Challenge is not only is it a very fun and friendly competition for employees and all individuals all over the country, it really doesn't stop at the fun part, right? So after six years of really running this initiative, the really exciting things that we're seeing is individuals and businesses are really benefiting from this programming by just looking at the numbers and measurable outcomes. We're seeing individuals really taking control over their health as it relates to healthy, sustainable weight loss. We're seeing community involvement where people are really taking this home to their families and surrounding communities and dedicating that together time that surrounds a healthy lifestyle. We're seeing workers, group, uh, workers comp claims go down in some of our groups. So from an employer standpoint, if you have healthier, more energetic and engaged employees coming into work every day, um, they're going to be more productive and potentially be at less risk for things like heart attack or stroke or diabetic events, something like that. I've spoken to many participants that have brought their blood pressure numbers down just by having access to a, a platform that really gamifies activity. Some have brought their cholesterol numbers down. 
We're seeing really positive measurable effects on individuals' mental health, right? Amanda, you touched on it. Coming, coming off the year we all just had, it's so crucial now that we're focused so much you know, on our mental health and our daily life. The Spark Pittsburgh platform is fully capable of being virtual and socially distant, hopefully moving away from that shortly here. Um, so it was great to see individuals really using this as a resource virtually as well. People are really coming together in their communities and organizations and getting outside and having some good collaborative fun, right? Um, you know, this includes walking meetings, group yoga, mindfulness sessions, stretching sessions. So we're just really proud to play a small role in improving the lives of others um, in hundreds of workplaces around the country and in, in, in their homes as well. So thank you guys so much for having us today. We're, we're really honored to be here. Great, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Riley. All right, so now I would like to transition to uh, Doubletree Pittsburgh, and I would like to invite Stephanie Mazzolo, the Director of People and Culture from Doubletree Pittsburgh Green Tree to speak. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. And it's an honor to be able to share alongside of these other impressive nominees. I, I think this event is wonderful and we appreciate you hosting it. Our program is inspired by a quote by Mother Teresa. If you wanna change the world, go home and love your family. We spent a lot of time looking for ways to outwardly focus on development in uh, ways such as mentoring and volunteering on advisory boards. And although these are tremendously important, we didn't have an internal program that focused on current associates who had significant leadership potential. We developed a program where our approach was inward and it has taken part-time entry-level associates to department heads, senior directors, and even to opportunities across the country for other companies. The elements of our program consist of focusing on more in-depth training, continuing education, cross-training, mentoring, networking, and corporate sponsorship of memberships with um, organizations that can benefit the associates and help get them to the next level. Another element of this program is the outward impact on community service. Our associates are encouraged to participate in the Clean the World Soap Recycling Program that impacts other countries around the world to volunteer with the Greater Pittsburgh Hotel Association, Pittsburgh Cares, and spend their time giving back to their communities and using their resources and talents, not just within the organization, but also without. So thank you for your time today and allowing us the opportunity to share on our new leadership development program. Thank you, Stephanie, appreciate it. At this time, I would like to invite Cheryl Paxton Hughes, Chief Operating Officer at Edgar Snyder and Associates to the virtual stage. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm glad to be with you this morning. I think um, if I say Edgar Snyder, many of you might point your finger um, or you may be wondering how many lives uh, Edgar actually has. Um, uh, uh, what I want to talk to you today is not so much about um, Edgar, but, uh, but about the firm and what we are doing from a, from a culture perspective. Um, you know, we, we have a strong community presence for those who may not know. Um, we have a long history of partnering with nonprofits like the Hayward House, uh, Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, uh, Variety, and, and many, many more um, uh, nonprofit organizations. And we really felt it was time that we started to look inward and think thought, thinking about how we could support our own um, community of employees. And the best way that I can describe how our diversity and inclusion initiative got started was, honestly, it was almost a year ago today, um, Mike Rosenzweig, who is our managing partner, was actually on vacation at the beach. And I remember distinctly texting him and saying, you know, um, really, really, we've got to do something. And this was right around, I think it's a, a one year anniversary today of, of the murder of George Floyd. And he wrote me back immediately um, and said, you're absolutely right, it's time. We've got to do something and we've got to start making a difference. Um, so we immediately reached out to our workforce. Um, we did a couple of things. Uh, we began a donation program where we matched 100% of donations towards several different uh, social 
justice causes. And we actually um, ask our workforce, you know, which causes were the most important to them. Um, we also hired a consultant to come in and help us uh, formulate an approach to our diversity and inclusion strategy. The entire partnership team and executive team went through training in July um, on, on uh, unconscious bias. We surveyed the organization to find out exactly where we could improve. Uh, we officially launched a pro bono uh, program in January, and I think Christine Sermeski Young is on uh, today's um, award ceremony. Christine uh, is one of the key individuals responsible for launching that program. She's an equity partner in the firm um, where we're focused on helping those who are disenfranchised with legal matters. Um, we also did firm-wide training in February with all of our employees and we'll continue to do that. I think the most important thing that we did, honestly, was we decided to launch a um, board instead of like a diversity and inclusion council. And we did that because we wanted to make sure that everybody in the firm understood how important this was uh, to the firm, to not only our internal employees, but also externally. Um, so we formally launched our board in February and we have the full support of Michael Rosenswag, our managing partner, as our executive sponsor. We have budget, we have resources. Uh, we have recently developed goals. And um, a couple of those goals are building out early career uh, pipelines. So working with the Pittsburgh Public School District to attract high school students into the area of law. Um, also looking at all of our policies, systems, and procedures. You know, What are we doing that's not inclusive? How do we start changing that in our culture and going through an extensive education um, and continuing to do this. And there are several folks who are on the board uh, that are here today uh, with us. So I'm really, really proud uh, to be partnering with them on this important initiative. And much like a, a nonprofit board is structured, all of our board members will have terms. Um, they'll have the opportunity to reapply after their term has ended or other employees in the firm will have an opportunity to apply for board uh, membership. So uh, we're really excited. We're just getting started, uh, but we have tremendous leadership support, uh, a budget and lots of resources at our disposal. Uh, and we're also looking forward to inviting an external uh, community member to join our board as well so that we can get um, outside perspective. So thank you so much for um, considering us and we're, we're very honored to be here today. Thank you, Cheryl. I'd like to turn it over to Liz. Sure thing. Thank you uh, again, Cheryl, Megan, uh, Riley and Amanda and Stephanie. Uh, you certainly have showcased that your organi organizations are demonstrating that their people certainly matter and they are the key to the business's success. So thank you very much. Um, at this time, we're going to pause uh, for a few questions from the audience. Uh, you can either do this by unmuting yourself and speaking directly to our nominees, or if you wanted to just post your question in the chat box, uh, either directly to myself or for everybody to read, and we can um, engage in some Q&A quickly here. Anybody want to start? Hey, Liz, if you don't mind, I, I, I have a question. Uh, it's Ron Kubitz here. Sure um, thing. First of all, I want to say uh, excellent uh, presentations and uh, you know programs all. So they were all they were all excellent. I appreciate that. I learned a lot as well. Um, you know, many of you in your little presentations mentioned the word uh, culture, um, values. You know what uh, these initiatives did not only for your company but the outside community. So I was curious, looking at your companies, and your organizations, how has your initiatives really helped to drive your core values and your company missions, what kind of uh, improvements or what kind of, uh, you know, adherence to your values and mission did this really bring about? Anyone want to take that one? I can jump in. This is Amanda Kanega from Spark360. I would say um, from our own internal team and cultural standpoint, our members wake up every day feeling that they're making a difference in people's lives. And that is one of our core values that we have to love what we do. We wanna do it the right way. We wanna feel that we're actually making a difference in our work. And we hear that constantly by, by stories 
of the lives that we've impacted. So every town hall we have internally, it's a tell me something good. And every time it's about an individual that we may have touched and it could come through our Spark America Fit City Challenge or in through another channel, but it has improved how our team um, wakes up every day energized to create another story. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody else want to add to that? Uh, this is Megan from Arconic. Um, I wanted to just say, you know, Arconic had the very unique experience of launching uh, a new company uh, at the beginning of, you know, the, the pandemic. Um, and I look at it as from an employee perspective, we had really every reason to, to put you know, the Grow Together campaign on the on the back burner, right? We hadn't even closed out a, a quarter um, as a company yet. But to me, that was the ultimate support of really making sure that we do it right and that it is part of our foundation and who we are. And I think that employees really uh, responded. You saw from the results, right? We, we uh, had a lot of engagement with it, but I think it really, um, you know, it wasn't just focused on the numbers and the finances and closing the quarter. We really, the leadership team stepped out and said, this will be part of our culture. Um, and, and here's a toolkit to, to help us achieve that. And it, it's part of our core values now. So I, uh, that stands out to me uh, as a particular challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Liz, if you don't mind this, I'm sorry, I was putting my hand up, but I, I realized I could just jump in. <laughs> Um, Couldn't see it. <laughs> so, Ron, just to talk about the values, you know, what's interesting is um, I actually helped focus groups when I first got to Edgar Snyder to create our values. And there was a value that was missing that came out of that, which was teamwork. And um, all of the uh, employees felt like that this was a culture where it, we helped one another, um, we collaborated together, we included others ideas. And so what's ironic is when we went to implement our DNI strategy um, and we did a survey, we actually had to sit and challenge each other to find things that were bad in the survey that we could fix because there was a lot of positive already around, you know, people are respectful, um, but we had to think, well, but that's people like you and I that are saying we're respectful. What, what do people really, really feel and how can we really continue to improve and go even deeper into our core values? And we are actually going to be adding um, uh, inclusion and diversity as a core value moving forward because we just don't feel like teamwork necessarily encompasses that. Great, thank you. All right, let me check the chat here. Does anybody else have any other questions for this group of finalists? I, Liz, I have a, a question. Um, first of all, it's Mary Kohler, and I just wanna say I am blown away with the submissions this year. And congratulations to all of you and all of these efforts because they are truly leading the way and, and shaping the future of your companies. And that's where, where my question comes in. You, you described some, described some really impressive results in all of your presentations around the, you know, the numbers of activities and the, the numbers of donations, different things like that. Um, what, what impact do you think your initiative will have on your organization's success? Or have you experienced any any impact to date um, based on your initiative um, on your organization's success? I'd be happy to answer that. Um, thank you for that question, Mary. I found that the program that we've put into place here at the Double Tree has allowed for the associates to become more invested in the workplace and in what we are trying to accomplish for our guests. And I found that when our associates feel valued and feel that we are paying attention to their personal needs, that they can then take that and, and do that for our guests and be invested in our guests' needs and wants and, and make their experiences excellent and special. So I found that the more that we put into our associates, the more they 
then turn and, and put into our guests and customers and into our business. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Yes. Sorry. I'm happy to jump in, Mary. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I think just with the Spark Pittsburgh Fit City Challenge and, and being at BAB and implementing this for the past few years now, um, we're really seeing people have a higher participation in coming into work and having, having more collaborative fun working together, right? I mean, there are people taking walking lunch breaks um, that's really promoting you know, togetherness and, and improvement of, of the business overall. Um, and furthermore, being able to implement this in other businesses around the area and across the country, um, you know, we're seeing an improvement in, in talent retention. And it's really important that when we are hiring now, it's, um, you know, there, there's things that are offered that, that do invest in the employee. Employees that are most successful are, are feeling a purpose and a sense of connectivity to what they're doing. So um, we really feel that that's helped grow our, build, our business and we're seeing it grow other businesses as well. Well, that's great. Um, that employee experience is very powerful for sure. And Amanda, I see, Amanda, I see your hand raised. Did you want to go there? <laughs> Riley just beat me to it, which was perfect. I was going to also mention the talent um, retention and the ability to also recruit based on these types of programs that we can offer to you know, small and large businesses to really create that culture and engagement with everyone and building that sense of purpose. Thank you, Amanda. All right, well, now it's time to give away some very awesome prizes from our business partners. Um, business, our PHRA's business partners are industry experts and they truly know uh, what products and services are out there to help make your life as an HR professional easier. At this time, I would like to invite Kim Abel, the Executive Director and Clinical Assistant Professor of the Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education at the Katz Graduate School of Business um, to the stage. Kim is going to talk a little bit about the, the CATS Graduate School business, and then we will randomly select an attendee to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So welcome, Kim. Thank you. Innovative, responsive, and engaging. Congratulations to the finalists. You have each demonstrated a commitment to the employees you serve, and I am honored to celebrate with you today. As a previous finalist in an earlier iteration of my career, I know the joy comes from stretching boundaries, solving problems, and making a difference. Thank you for the work you are doing for your organizations and so many members of our Pittsburgh community. The University of Pittsburgh Executive MBA Programs and Center for Executive Education is excited to become a gold signature sponsor for PHRA. Thank you to Liz Lamping, who has welcomed us to this powerful community of HR leaders. I welcome the opportunity to learn from you and share the ways we are building programs to meet the demands of today's changing workforce, understanding the ways we work and leveraging the capabilities and capacity of leaders. I look forward to con connecting with you. And now I get to announce the winner. So um, the numbers that we have in here right now are one through, we have 66 participants here right now. So do you want to, did, do you have a random number generator or do you want me to use mine? <laughs> I have one. All right, so do one through 66 for me. So it's really 65, so I don't count myself, right? Right, right, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> 42. All right, 42, give me one second here. Ah, Diane Hauser, and Diane is, I thought I saw her, 42. Yep, Diane Hauser is with us, and Diane Hauser is a proud winner of a $50 Amazon gift card sponsored by the University of Pittsburgh. I'll get that out to you um, when we wrap up today. So thank you very much. Mark that one down. 
All right, our next sponsor that we have is Vision Benefits of America. Um, unfortunately, Matt Cuomo is not able to be with us today, so I will go ahead and do the prize raffle there. Um, but just a little bit about Vision Benefits of America. Um, the ability to see clearly is key to optimal living and quality of life for all people and extends beyond health to every person's ability to participate in and contribute to society. Uh, VBA's mission is to improve the human experience by utilizing innovative models of service, delivery, advocacy to reduce barriers to high quality eye care. Um, and many of you probably do know uh, Matt, he's been, VBA has been a partner with PHRE now for, for 15 or so years. So we um, continue to thank them for their support. All right, now at this time, let's see, one through 60, oh, one through 666, that's not gonna work. One through 65, and the number I got is 17. Who is lucky number 17? Bear with me here one second. Ah, Danielle Hines. Danielle, are you, are you live? Yes, I am live. <laughs> you are live. All right, Danielle, you will be getting a prize as well. And that is also a $50 Amazon gift card. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys. All right. So now I'm going to turn it back over so we can start to learn uh, about the, the final four uh, companies that we are recognizing today. So Lisa, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thanks, Liz. And congratulations to our winners. And and our thank you to our sponsors again. And we've already had some great presentations. So we're, we're going to move on. And the next one we're going to um, talk about is Quick Med Claims. And I'm going to invite Crystal Palermo, Vice President of Human Resources at Quick Med Claims to the virtual stage. All right, thank you, Lisa. Well, good morning, everybody. It's such an honor to be here with you all today. Um, it's not every day that you have the opportunity to completely rebuild and rebrand the entire department. To build a department, it takes the right people in the right roles, vision, an entrepreneurial spirit, stamina, discipline, consistency, and collaboration. Here at QMC, myself and my team were tasked with building and rebranding the entire HR department. And I'm proud to say that we have done just that in a record amount of time. To name a few of our accomplishments, we've moved all talent acquisition in-house. We've implemented software to help us recruit, which actually helped to reduce our time to fill by over 50%. We reduced recruiting costs, and it provided us the ability to build pipelines of talent. We designed an in-house HR ticketing system using technology to create a portal where team members and leaders can submit any questions that they may have, um, transfer requests, promotion requests. Um, and this really has helped to streamline our processes significantly. It has re reduced our average response time to 24 hours. And in addition, we have the ability to track all questions that come through so it provides us uh, a review of different trends that we can actually follow up with our leaders if they need additional training. We designed our compensation structure and career ladders for the organization. We designed a mentorship and internship program. We redesigned our benefit package to offer more innovative benefits and implemented a 360 wellness program and provide flexible work arrangements to our team members. We implemented virtual pizza town hall meetings over the lunch hour so team members can come and hear updates from our CEO and COO. And we play fun great games and uh, trivia and giveaway prizes to, to really lift spirits during this um, difficult time that we just came out of. We revised our team member handbook to be compliant with all states that we're in. And we revamped our company performance review to better align with our core values. And the impact of these initiatives have really been significant on our organization. We recently won top places to work in the healthcare industry. And my team has really worked to unify the organization. Uh, we're a champion for our team members while also being a trusted business partner for our leaders. So thank you so much. Crystal, thank you. That's amazing work and what a great accomplishment for you and your team. So we're glad that you're one of our finalists today. Oh, thank you so much. 
All right, very good. So our next finalist is Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh. And at this time, I'd like to invite Columbus Seabrooks, Chief Human Resources Officer from Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh to speak. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes? yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, thank you guys for having uh, the URA here. And um, I'd like to say congratulations as well to the other uh, nominees. Um, this is an honor. Uh, just to let you know what we're doing here at the URA. Uh, the URA is an economic development authority place for economic, excuse me, for economic and development, as well as a lot of our MWBE programs and a lot of our housing programs. Uh, we're located obviously downtown in the city of Pittsburgh. And um, when we talk about equity work here at the URA, we don't think of it as an afterthought or lip service. We actually put action to this. And so, you know, when this journey began in 2016, when we brought on the equity working group and in 2017, we brought in a consultant, we decided to really roll our sleeves up and really do the work. And that work um, was done by the consulting, um, helping us prepare what this would look like. So um, we had the board involved as well as the employees, the consultant, um, did an assessment on the organization and we looked at a, and, and that through that assessment gave us a roadmap, roadmap on what we should focus on and what we should do. And so that we developed a equity, excuse me, a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. It's a three to four, five year plan that outlines the work that needs to be done in the next three to five years, as well as um, us looking at our compensation packages and paying equal pay um, for women and minorities in our organization, as well as um, tailoring our uh, recruitment um, strategies and initiatives. So we've really done a lot of work there. Um, we have changed our bottom line by adding um, a diverse workforce um, and uh, uh, having diverse uh, talent without the organization. Diamante Walker, could you help me with this? I'm extremely nervous. <laughs> Columbus, you should you should not be nervous. And I, I do want to take a moment to congratulate all of the fellow nominees. I have to say, as a member of the public sector, to be recognized alongside uh, our private sector partners, I find it to be a tremendous honor. And it, it is a credit to the work that Columbus Brooks has done at the URA around really encouraging more strategic level HR, sort of beyond the administrative function, but really focusing on how do we create um, a, a, a place of belonging, a sense of belonging in a, in a culture that lives up to the things that we talk about. We use the terms div diversity, equity, and inclusion. And there was a time in our senior leadership where that was not reflective. And uh, Columbus challenged the organization and began leading up in really starting to, uh, to you know, redirect the board on how to center diversity, equity, and inclusion in a way that would be reflective of the city of Pittsburgh that we live in. And so we've not only reframed our policies, because we know that policies are what you write on paper, we have transformed our practice. And so we make sure that we embody these values at the very highest level up to our executive director, Greg Flistrom, who's also on the call today. And I think he noted in the chat uh, how hardworking our uh, HR team are. So diversity and equity and inclusion is not just an HR initiative. It's a 95 person initiative. We all take it very, very seriously. And as the, you know, the first black female director in the URA 74 year history, I think it's a credit to the kind of you know, courage, uh, profile and courage that Columbus has been to speak truth to power and to help change a very arcane system that really had not adapted up until 2017 was really not thinking about these issues and how do we uh, be better public service uh, representatives for, for the city of Pittsburgh. So again, I wanna thank you and thank you Columbus and your team for the hard work and we are grateful for the recognition today. Yeah, and just to piggyback on what Diamante has stated, we also looked at um, you know, when I think of inclusion, I always think about to include. And so, you know, it's, I'm thinking about what does that really mean to include? It's really to have people to have voice at the table. Um, you know, when I arrived, there weren't any female directors at the table. 
Um, I was the only person of color in the senior team. So to what, what does that really mean? It really means to include everyone. It really means to include our LGBTQ people as well. So we looked at some of our um, policies and um, you know, we included two holidays to our handbook, which is Stonewall. Um, that the URA celebrated last year. This will be our second year, as well as Juneteenth. We added those holidays to our handbook. Um, so it's like things like that and just getting that, that buy-in of everyone to make a really rounded, diverse workplace. And we have noticed it has changed our bottom line as well, is that people are more open to be free and be themselves, no matter who you are from gender, your race or your um, or your um, sexual orientation. We really wanted to change that um, at the URA, and we have seen that our productivity has gone up higher. People are more able to be freely work and be included. So, um, you know, equity inclusion is very very important for the URA. And now I'm getting my my, my mojo, and I don't want to over talk now. All right, thank you. <laughs> Wow, Columbus and Diamante, those are some really exciting things that are going on at your organization. Thank you both so much for sharing that with our group today and congratulations again on your nomination. All right, so now um, I'm going to introduce Laura McKnight. She's our Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Programs and Services from Vibrant Pittsburgh and I'd like her to come to the virtual stage for us. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. It is such an honor to be here today to talk about Vibrant's work and to be included in these fantastic nominees. And I am joined today by Sabrina Saunders Mosby, Vibrant Pittsburgh's president and CEO. Vibrant Pittsburgh is a nonprofit organization that works to attract, retain and elevate a diversity of talent to make our region a destination of choice for the employment of people of color. Vibrant Pittsburgh works with regional employers to assist them in creating exceptional people practices in many different ways in their workplaces, but most notably through our new initiative, the Vibrant Index. This is a collaboration between Vibrant Pittsburgh and the Allegheny Conference on Community Development, and the Vibrant Index initiative drives diversity, equity, and inclusion changes across industry and sector, identifying areas of success as well as what critical actions are needed to improve the practices, policies, and cultures of organizations in our region. The Vibrant Index encourages companies to reflect on best practices, to investigate opportunities to increase the impact of their DEI efforts and to create more inclusive and welcoming work environments. So the Vibrant Index is a confidential DEI measurement tool and participation is very simple. Organizations complete, excuse me, complete a confidential diagnostic survey and this captures their DEI practices that they're currently utilizing as well as the opportunity areas that they have in 10 criteria areas. Each organization then receives a confidential scoring with customized guidance on how to improve their efforts. In addition, our publicly released regional summary report reviews current trends. It identifies opportunities for greater diversity, equity, and inclusion impact, and it shares our findings with a larger audience. We uh, just finished our diagnostic period and that was between March and May of 2021. This was our second year, and we had 78 organizations in our region that participated. This was a 56% increase in participation from 2019, which was our inaugural year of the index. At Vibrant Pittsburgh, we say that we measure what matters to us and that what we measure really gets our attention. The Vibrant Index encourages regional reflection and action by asking, what are we doing about DEI? Is it working? And how do we actually know? Looking back over the last year, it is clear that sentiments about diversity, equity, and inclusion are changing. And as a region, we must move beyond sentiment and bake diversity, equity, and inclusion into our organizations on an operational level. Equitable, inclusive practices and policies will outlive sentiment. A commitment to the goals of the Vibrant Index will facilitate the organizational changes that are necessary for our region to thrive and to attract and retain the top talent of today and of the future. 
thank you so much for your time today. Wow, thank you so much, Laura. It sounds like you are doing some really wonderful things in our region, so thank you for that. All right, um, our last nominee, certainly not least by any, by any stretch, I'm going to introduce um, and invite Lisa Davidson, Chief Human Resources Officer from Black Box to speak with us today. Lisa, you're muted. Still muted, sorry about that. <laughs> so I, I had to start, I'll start again. Uh, thank you for, uh, for including us as part of the award celebration. This is the first time Black Box has been nominated and we're really pleased that the nomination was for a leadership program that we've just launched. So to give you some uh, background, up until about seven months ago, we had one learning and development Black Box. And prior to her joining, Four years ago, Black Box didn't have any training or learning and development. Leadership development hadn't been offered for over 20 years, and that lack of leadership development became very evident. Both Barb Hickey, who's uh, on the, the call today, uh, who's our learning and development manager, and I are, are absolutely passionate about leadership, and we know that without developing our leaders, we're at both a competitive disadvantage, and we are a global company, but we're also uh, at, at have a challenge with employee engagement. So um, really the, the, at the, the end of the day, we realized that Black Box had failed to move away from the leadership style of the 1980s, which worked in the 1980s. It was a very top-down approach. Um, and that impacted our company culture, our communication with our team members, our ability to hire and retain top talent. So Barb and I talked about it and decided that we wanted to have a three-pronged leadership development program, allowed us to focus on all levels of leadership. The first is called leadership excellence, and that focuses on our top performing, more senior leaders. Um, we're just wrapping up our inaugural class with that one. The second is called emerging leaders, and that's the one we've received the nomination for. And it's designed for new or current managers who are focused on building their management uh, abilities and developing their leadership skills it's a six month program. Um, it's a blended learning series with a combination of assessments, virtual instructor led courses, leaders sessions, online courses, and even group projects that are very specific to the issues that are keeping our business leaders up at night. It's a minimum of an hour and a half to a two hour per week commitment for six months. So they really people have to be invested and want to do it. The really exciting part, as I mentioned, we're a global company and this inaugural class, uh, we had over 65 nominations. And through that, we had to eliminate you know, half of them. Um, so we boiled it down to 29 participants that represent nine different countries, uh, United States, UK, Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, India, Japan, Japan, Malaysia, and Singapore. Leaders as teachers include our CEO, uh, myself as a CHRO, our head of our largest division, Global Solutions Integration, our head of marketing, but also some leaders that were in our leadership excellence program. So those more senior level leaders. So they're kind of paying it forward by teaching um, the uh, emerging leaders uh, portion as well. So we're developing their leadership uh, and, and training and development skills. So the program's just started, um, but the feedback has been really positive. The participants not only enjoy what they're learning, but they love the fact that they're able to talk with each other, coming from different cultural backgrounds and perspectives, di different perspectives on how we run our business. So that, that mind sharing has been really, really helpful. Uh, we'll be working on our third leadership program, and that's designed more from team leaders. So um, really entry level um, that are learning management as well as leadership. But truly the fact that Barb has been able to get two leadership programs off the ground in less than a year is amazing. And all credit to her because she has worked her, uh, her, her tail off to get these programs up and running. Feedback's been very positive. Um, we, we can't give specific data points yet on um, how it's increased our, our uh, retention because we just launched these programs, but we can already see the leadership behaviors changing. And that's helping Black Box to form the culture and the employee engagement we're looking for that keeps us in a, a, at a competitive advantage. So we're really excited about them. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Lisa, and great work. And how exciting for all of you at Black Box for what you're what it you're is. Doing. Thank you. 
engaging in. All right, very good. So um, thank you to all of the um, additional nominees in those presentations. And, and I thank you all that are participating on, on this virtual event can see the judges. We had a very difficult task ahead of us. And um, so it, it was an exciting time to listen and see and hear, learn about all these great programs. So I am going to turn it back over to Liz. All right, thank you so much, Lisa. And, and thank you, Crystal, Columbus, DeMonte, Laura, and Lisa uh, for explaining your initiatives. You truly have provided your employees and, and organizations in, in the Pittsburgh area the opportunity to grow, develop, to be inclusive and reach greater levels of success personally and professionally. So it's wonderful to hear all of that. Um, before we give some prizes away and then finally announce the winners, we're going to pause for a few more minutes here to just have a couple quick questions uh, for the nominees that we just um, unveiled there. So uh, again, just as always, please feel free to either enter your question into the chat box or unmute yourself uh, and speak directly to the nominees. So is there anybody out there that has any questions for them? Hey Liz, this is Christine. I actually have a question. Sure. Um, so first off, uh, to all the finalists that previously presented and just presented, congratulations to all of you. Um, you are doing incredible things um, within your organizations um, here in the Pittsburgh area. So thank you for all that you're doing. Um, so the question I had for the finalists that just presented, um, how have you adapted during COVID to ensure the continuation of your progress? So this is Laura with Vibrant Pittsburgh. Our Vibrant Index last year had nine categories. And this year we decided to add a 10th category to the instrument to make sure that we were keeping up with what's going on with both the pandemic and with everything that uh, has been highlighted within our region and in the United States around systemic inequities. So we weren't scoring organizations on that 10th category, but we are gathering information about it because what we wanna be able to do with our summary report is send out any best practices that are emerging both around the pandemic and around how organizations are responding to systemic inequities. Hopefully what we can do is we can disseminate some promising practices around what organizations can begin to think about doing in 2021 and further on. So that was a, a pivot that we added to our instrument. Um, and I anticipate that we're going to be uh, continuing to develop it, um, you know, just to see how the workplace has been impacted by you know, this new digital environment. Um, and, and by a new focus on equity and inclusion. I think it's an excellent question. This is Diamante Walker at the URA. Uh, one of the things that I've been saying is that COVID allowed an opportunity for the URA to do some soul searching and to really figure out not only you know why we exist, but who do we exist for? And because we had to immediately work in a remote environment, we found new and creative strategies uh, to deepen our engagement within the community and to deepen our engagement with MWBE businesses in particular. Uh, we were able to deploy more than $6.5 million in emergency COVID relief funding to small diverse uh, companies throughout 2020. That's unprecedented for the URA. We've conducted more than, you know, 50 information sessions around how to navigate COVID. And more importantly, I think that we've helped a lot with housing stability uh, for those that were facing, um, you know, economic strain during the COVID, the height of COVID. And we've been able to deploy more than nearly $7 million to provide housing relief to homeowners and struggling renters. And for our workforce, I think that we've created a more flexible, equitable workforce. Um, not only women need to take care of their children, but also men. And we've created an environment where folks could take care of their children, take care of loved ones, and still meet their workplace obligations through um, diversifying our digital tools. And again, creating a place where folks, you know, you need to be human. People are human beings first, and we've experienced a pandemic, and the URA wanted to be very flexible around that. Yeah, I, I would I would echo what Diamante is saying. I think the pandemic has given uh, Black Box the opportunity to kind of test um, a different approach to uh, the the uh, of how employees are working. Um, I think there's always been a question with any company, you know, can remotely and do you really have the most productivity? Completely agree that you know we've got not only uh, working moms but working dads. We've got um, other challenges that people face during the pandemic and 
um, I think it gave us an opportunity to prove to ourselves that we can uh, accommodate and work with our team members. Um, and that also gives us a competitive advantage as well. The workforce coming in today is not interested in working in the office five days a week without flexibility. So um, I think uh, COVID through all of its challenges, um, there were some bright spots um, that helped the companies to realize uh, what they can do differently and be successful. Hey, Kristen, <clears throat> this is Crystal. That was a great question. Um, just to chime in here, one of the things that we did before COVID, uh, we were about 25% of the workforce was permanent work at home, and the rest was working on um, different sites across the U.S., um, and then we transitioned to 100% work from home environment. Um, so one of the things that we did, which I mentioned briefly, was we implemented those virtual pizza town hall meetings um, because it was really important for us just to maintain that engagement. And we wanted team members to feel connected. Um, so we have, I would say around a 95%, close to 100% turnout during those and the team members really do like those. So that was just one of the things that we did. Thank you all for your answers on that. It just, I think it goes to show too with everybody's answers that they provided that, you know, even though COVID did provide, so, or not provide, um, they, it brought up so many challenges. There definitely were, as Lisa mentioned, there were some bright spots that were able to be found through it. So thank you for your answers. Very true. I love that people find the bright spots. Um, through the, the last year there. Uh, anybody else have any other questions for these great nominees? Hi Liz, it's Pam, I have a question. Sure thing. All right, first I wanna congratulate all the finalists. Um, you've shared a ton of information and I really enjoyed this. Um, so my question is, what advice do you have for other companies that are looking to implement a change like you have? I, I can uh, give you my, my opinion, I think um, one of the things that um, Barb did really well is putting together the framework of the program and then making sure that the, um, the support came from the top, from our CEO and our executive team um, were all bought into it. Um, and then also um, making sure that they, they uh, were on board with who the As I mentioned, both programs are six month commitments, two hours a, a week. Um, so that's all that time away day-to-day -day jobs and uh, we're kind of we're kind of banking on the productivity and their increased leadership skills going forward but there is a hit to the day-to-day -day work that they have to get done um, so what I would encourage people to, to do is if you want to launch a, a, a program um, what regardless of what kind of program it is to get that support from the top and the buy-in from the top um, because it's it will make that that trickle down support will make your efforts a whole lot easier than if you try and uh, work a couple of levels below, uh, and then you get people pushing back saying they don't have time to participate. Um, so there, every participant has attended every uh, class with Barb, um, unless they had a true uh, exception. And most of the managers were very supportive of the of managers of their their leaders participating in the program, even if it meant they were skipping other meetings um, that were more day to day requirements. So um, I think that. Uh, initial top-down is really important. Thank you, Lisa. Any Anybody else? All right, well, thank you all for the excellent dialogue there. And it is time now to give out a few more Amazon gift cards. First up, I'm going to invite to the stage our sponsor, Deb Hansen, the Recruitment Advertising Sales Manager from the Post-Gazette. Deb, would you like to join us? Sure. Thank you so much, Liz. And thank everyone at the PHRA for the opportunity to be a sponsor of this great event. Um, I, it's exciting to hear all of these initiatives that are being implemented to make your organizations better for your employees. So I'd like to congratulate all of the nominees and thank you for your work. Your contributions are so important and it's so exciting to hear that. So I guess I'm allowed to give like a, a minute plug about the Post-Gazette. So what I think I would want you to know about our organization is that we just have a great story to tell. We will continue to grow and provide great journalism in the decades to come. 
Um, a little stat, our website, postgazette.com, has over 3 million monthly users. We're one of the largest in the market, and we do continue to transform on a daily basis. But from an advertising standpoint, what do we do? Our goal is really to make your job easier any way that we can. And coming out of this pandemic, I know that recruiting departments across the area are facing more challenges than ever before. So we can help you find a solution that works for you. If you haven't spoken with us recently, with all of our media partnerships, um, we are able to be a one-stop shop for job distribution. So we can help you get your jobs across all of the top aggregators. So just let the PG do the heavy lifting. And this also includes many diversity and initiative network opportunities as well. Um, another thing we are doing is we're hosting a virtual hiring fair for the Pittsburgh market on June 17th. And this is open to all job seekers, but we're having a special emphasis with this particular event on college grads and entry level positions and we still have a few employer spots available. So if you haven't spoken with us in a while, I would just suggest you connect with myself or my colleague Jack Fardo and we'd just love to find out what we could do to help make your 2021 the most successful recruiting year ever. And thanks again for this opportunity this morning. And thank you so much, Deb. We appreciate having you here. Do you want me to generate a number or are you? I, to... I just did. Okay, so go ahead. The number is 29. All right, bear with me here one second. 29 is Michelle Reese. Michelle, or now are you in this one? Let's see. I am. Thank you. Yay. Michelle Reese is with us. And uh, again, Michelle, I will send that out to you. Um, it's a virtual electronic, or I guess electronic Amazon gift card. So I will get that over to you when we wrap up today for $50. Thank you. Come. Yeah, no problem. All right. So um, the next sponsor we have is. Um, Gallagher. Uh, our representative from Gallagher is also not able uh, to participate today. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull a number myself from my trusty phone. 24, 24. Ryan Kish. Ryan, are you with us? I am. Thank you. All right. Ryan Kish is a winner of another Amazon gift card. And again, it'll be sent electronically and I will get that out when we conclude today. All right, so let's see here. All right, it's time. It's the moment we have been waiting for. So who are the 2021 Engaging Pittsburgh Company winners? Brenda, would you like to do the honor and unveil the winners for everybody today? Yes, I would. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our third place winner recipient is Black Box. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Our second place winner award recipient is Edgar Snyder and Associates. Yeah. And our first place award recipient is Urban Redevelopment. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Very good. Would you like to say a few words, um, Columbus or? What an honor. I'm over the moon. Thank you. <laughs> We are excited for you. My chiclets are shining so big, my teeth. I'm so <laughs> happy. Um, I don't know. I just want to thank the HR staff and the um, PHRA for recognizing us, our board, um, our uh, Diamante Walker and Greg, our uh, executive director and our deputy executive director. And oh my God, this is amazing. Uh, well, I'm very happy. Congratulations. <laughs> and I have to say that I am I am speechless and I am shocked and I am very, very grateful uh, for the recognition of this work. And I'd like to thank you, Columbus, for being such a leader and such a strategic thinker around how we can do HR that's at, that's human centered. Thank you very much for that. Congrats. Awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> shocked. I'm in shock. Thank you. Oh my God. It's like the Oscars, best picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, congratulations, congratulations to the URA as well as all of the other uh, finalists. You all um, have, you. Uh, are doing some wonderful things to help the organizations in our region and, and build our business community. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I think I am up next and congratulations again. Um, again, a difficult job for us judges and um, really excited about all the work every one of you are doing and congratulations again to our winners and to Columbus and Diamante at Urban Redevelopment Authority. Great job. All right. Um, last but not least, as I had said before, it is now time for our leader of the year recognition. And this award celebrates leaders that demonstrate integrity, ingenuity, and creativity. And we have really some, some wonderful finalists this year. Um, and I'm excited um, to introduce a little bit about them. Our first um, finalist is Sonia Lane Gartside. Sonia is passionate about helping leaders achieve business results. Her work focuses on improving the performance of people and the systems they work in. She's an advocate and cheerleader for people and ideas, working tirelessly to help her clients around the world to create environments where people can thrive. Sonia is a believer of wellness that encompasses the whole person rather than just the quick fixes that look good on the surface but fall short of addressing the root of the issue. She emphasizes her commitment to this by ensuring that leaders focus on the core problems, make wise decisions, and deliberately let go of the way things are and operate from the way they could be. As an international consultant, Sonia drives organizational performance through evidence-based practices, utilizing research to find and implement proven business and people strategies. As the author of the book, Workplace Anxiety, How to Refuel and Re-Engage, Sonia emphasizes the same approach. Her book lays out her creative and innovative approach on how readers can conquer stress, anxiety, and fear of uncertainty at work, and unleash their power and empower themselves mentally, physically, and emotionally to lead companies successfully and to thrive. Sonia, would you like to say a few words to our group today? Oh, thank you, Lisa. Hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here and such an honor to be nominated um, in this position. And I'll just love to say thank you to the PHRA, to all my clients, and I just enjoy and welcome this community. So thank you and good luck to all my other, all the other nominees. I'm really pleased <laughs> to be mentioned among you. All right. Thank you so much, Sonia. All right, so our next nominee, uh, Melissa Miller. Uh, Melissa is an incredibly engaging, empathetic and inclusive leader. She's passionate about employee advocacy as well as growing, developing and recognizing talent in alignment with business needs. Her commitment to inclusion, diversity and equity, recognition and creativity is extremely impactful within Arconic. Melissa was promoted into the Executive Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer role when Arconic launched as a new company. She partnered with their CEO, who was also new to his role. They built a balanced and diverse leadership team. She's engaged with her peers and drove Arconic to emerge as a strong values-driven business that survived an unexpected pandemic and unprecedented market downturn. She led the HR function through the rapidly changing landscape while ensuring that her employees worldwide were safe by implementing protocols established by their pandemic team. Melissa is open to new ideas, appreciates creativity and values and feedback. She drives a culture of transparency, trust, respect, and inclusion at Arconic. Congratulations on your nomination, Melissa, and would you like to say a few words to the group? Sure. First, I'd like to thank uh, PHRA and everyone who contributed to this event to recognize companies and people making a positive impact in our community through innovative programs and exceptional leadership. And congratulations to all of the companies recognized today and to Sonia and Cheryl, who were also nominated, nominated as leaders of the year. I'm both humbled and honored to have been nominated to receive this recognition. I consider myself very fortunate to lead the HR function for a company that strongly values inclusion, diversity, and social equity, 
not just because it's today's hot topic, but because it has always been a priority of our leadership team. I joined this company over 15 years ago, and what really strikes me as I look back on my personal and professional journey is how important it is to build a network of people who recognize your strengths and provide a sounding board or guidance when you need it along the way. I've had such an impactful and rewarding experience in building informal mentoring relationships. I'm also very proud of the individual and collective efforts we've made through our Grow Together Inclusion and Diversity campaign that my colleague Megan McKay shared with you earlier. The feedback we've received from employees, particularly those who have taken action to broaden their perspective through learning activities has been truly astounding. Lastly, I also felt, I always felt that as a company, we work hard to be recognized as one of the best employers worldwide. As someone who has personally experienced the power of inclusion and diversity, I'm excited about what the future holds for our employees at Arconic, and I know we'll continue to work hard together to support that vision. So thank you. Thank you, Melissa, and congratulations again on your nomination. And our third nominee today, um, is Cheryl Paxton Hughes. Cheryl's the Chief Operating Officer and Chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Board at Edgar Snyder and Associates. Prior to this role, Cheryl spent over 15 years in human resources and in five years in project management in IT. She describes her role to her young son as being a teacher, but for the people in the business, and that she gives them resources they need to do their job and to be successful. During her tenure at UPMC, she co-founded the first employee resource, resource group focused on women in information technology. She's also taught a class to women who were re-entering the workforce who came from domestic abuse shelters. She's proud of her many former direct reports that are now leaders themselves. Her leadership style is both a combination of strategic and hands-on, and she's not afraid to roll up her sleeves to get things done. Congratulations, Cheryl, on your nomination, and would you like to share a few words with our group today? Thank you so much. Just like Melissa and Sonia, I'm so honored um, to be here and to be on the stage with them. Um, I was sort of shocked when I found out that I was being nominated. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful and appreciative to the PHRA and, and um, to everyone uh, today for the recognition. Um, you know, I was thinking about what Lisa said earlier from Black Box about how leadership development really helps to, to shape um, leaders. And I was so fortunate enough early in my career to work for a leadership development consulting firm where I learned all of the right behaviors. Um, and um, I haven't been perfect in modeling them over the past 20 years, but I've certainly tried to do that. And um, I do think the hallmark of a great leader is, is if you look back and look at where the, where their team members now in their careers. And I think, uh, I don't know if Chanel is still on uh, the, the, uh, the conference today, but um, Chanel at one point worked on my team and I'm so proud to see where she's at today. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. And congratulations again to our three nominees for our leader of the year. And I'm gonna turn this back over to Liz. You're on mute, Liz. Um, can you hear me now? <laughs> We're good. All right. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, I am sure that uh, selecting the leader of the year was an extremely hard task uh, for our judges. You, you truly are all the definition of top leaders. Um, and I am very fortunate that we get to have you a part of the PHRA and, and uh, a part of the award ceremony here today. Uh, but before we unveil the, the 2021 Leader of the Year, I, I want to give the participants the opportunity to ask each of you uh, a few questions. So again, just like the last two rounds here, please feel free to either enter your questions into the chat box or unmute yourself and speak directly to the nominees. Liz, uh, it's Ron, and I certainly echo uh, all of your comments to this uh, great group of finalists. So I have a question could be for, for any one of them. I mean, you obviously each have a lot of successes. I'm curious either from a client perspective, uh, you know, as a consultant or a corporate perspective, or even from let's say a Western PA perspective, what maybe is the greatest impact you've made or been one of the biggest successes that you can really, uh, you know, uh, say that you were, you know, you accomplished. 
I'll start. I mean, I would say from for our conic Alcoa over the years, really one of our greatest successes is the journey that we've been on from a diversity and inclusion perspective, from where we came from back in when I started 16 years ago to where we are today, um, we, we've made great strides. And for our employees, it's all about the education. It's not about the targets or, or trying to um, attract certain ethnicities. We, we really focus on diversity of thought um, and we help our employees understand the why, not just the what. Um, and so we've made great progress. And for me, I'm really proud of where, where we've come from. And again, that, that, that comes from our board all the way down to the shop floor. And we, we've really just seen some great things happen in this space. Thank you. I would add to that. I think the greatest thing that I probably am most proud of is the helping so many leaders to understand that work doesn't have to be miserable for their team. Um, helping them to understand that when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, that it means every single person, not just particular groups of people, but everyone in the organization needs to feel included and that this can be um, an enjoyable process and it's not a painful burden. It's really, <laughs> you know, you hear words like, oh, this is good. Yes, it is good because we're talking about making the environment and um, the workplace great for everyone. And I think that's the goal that I'm always trying to accomplish. So I'm really happy when I get there. Great, thank you. I guess I'll just add, you know, mine's probably more on an individual level. Um, I've, I just, I mean, I've, there's so many countless conversations and coaching sessions with leaders and direct reports where they just, you know, um, I don't know if the right word is confidence, but just helping each of them to step into their strengths and really see them take off once they believe that they can do something and that they're not limiting themselves to some version that they believe they had in their mind or what they think other people want them to do or how they want them to succeed. And I, I just, there's so many examples of that. And um, that's been for me, the real success, you know, you whatever, can throw as many metrics as you want, but measuring human potential, I just don't think you can, you can put a dollar value on that. Thank you. Great. All right, well, thank you guys for the great dialogue there. And thank you, Ron, for another great question. Uh, Lisa, I think it's time. Would you like to let us know who the 2021 Engaging Pittsburgh Leader of the Year recipient is? I would, and this is exciting, and congratulations again to all three of these wonderful um, nominees. And our winner is Sonia Lane Gartside. Congratulations, oh. Sonia. What a great accomplishment. We're so very, very proud. And again, to all of you, and um, we're excited that you are representing and you are chosen as our winner um, for our Leader of the Year this year. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love it. I feel like Columbus, like I've just won an award. <laughs> I want to, and I want to go like Sally Fields and say, you really like me. <laughs> I'm so appreciative. So thank you all very much. Thank you for the community. Thank you for the encouragement. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sonia, and, and thank you, um, Cheryl and Melissa, and all of the, the companies that we recognize today. Um, last but not least, I'd like to give away one more prize. So I'd like to invite um, uh, a representative from one of our gold sponsors, Centric, uh, Tracy Nall, the VP of Business Development, to raffle off our final prize of the day, which is a $100 Amazon gift card. So Tracy, are you available? You still there? <laughs> I am. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yep. Perfect. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Congratulations to the finalists, all the nominees, and of course, the winners. Um, we are proud to again sponsor PHRA. I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Centric. I know there are some folks on the line who I know already and who are clients, and we're happy to see everyone here and to hear the great stories that are impacting all of these organizations as well as the Pittsburgh community. So congrats and thank you. Um, it's, it's, it's really um, an admiring group. Um, so Centric has been in the HR tech space for over 26 years. Uh, we uh, were originally a small payroll service bureau and have remained focused on compliance, but over the decades 
have evolved into an HR solution offering um, all things HR under one umbrella. So we're nestled in the all-in-one space and still do the payroll service bureau activities for our clients, including tax filing and other compliance activities such as ACA and so forth. So um, our clients have 25 to 2,500 employees. And if you haven't dabbled in the all-in-one space and are interested, please you know, take a look at us, centrichr.com, or give me a call. But our overall goal is helping HR teams, like most of you are part of, to leverage technology and engage your employees. We, we recognize the need for employees to be engaged in their work life, data management, and our applications are mobile first and mobile friendly, allowing our employees, their managers, and administrators to all manage their work life right from their smartphone. So thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity to sponsor. And with that, I will run my generator here for a random winner. Um, is my top number 65, Liz? No, it looks like we've dropped a few since then. So let's go with one to 53. All right, you got it. I'm gonna run that now. And our winner is number 53. <laughs> oh, that one will be easy. Tracy Galuz, uh, I'm awful with last names, but I believe it's Tracy Gal Galuzzi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got it. So Tracy, congratulations. Are you, congratulations. And um, I will get that um, emailed out to you shortly here. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Well, thank you all for participating in today's uh, celebration. Thank you to the University of Pittsburgh, Centric, BBA, Gallagher, and the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and Monster for all the great prizes. Um, you know, I think one thing that I'm taking away today is that uh, every nominee has a common belief in that uh, strategic people investment can and, and will produce great business results. And I hope that you all have uh, a takeaway of your own that you can take back and, and implement within your organization. So thank you all for providing uh, me the opportunity to grow alongside with you each today. So Brenda, is there anything else that you would like to say before we wrap up? Absolutely. It has been a great honor to participate in this year's Engaging Pittsburgh Awards and to recognize our winners and finalists for a job well done. As we conclude the presentation, the Pittsburgh Human Resource Association has now recognized through this program 300 organizations and leaders that have shown how strategic people investment can and will have an impact on their business and the results. This year, the Engaging Pittsburgh Innovative People Practice Awards Committee and judges have done an outstanding job. So I would really like to give them all a round of applause. All right, and now I'm going to turn this back to Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda and everyone. And just to conclude today's wonderful program, and I was so honored to be a part of it. Um, you know, our PHR leadership also deserves recognition for continuing to support this important project. I have the pleasure of working with an extremely action-oriented board. Thank you to all of you for your support and enthusiasm. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge our executive director, Liz Lamping, and our membership development specialist, Catherine Miller, who have been instrumental in keeping all of these pieces of this initiative together for us. And on behalf of the many individuals and organizations that have partnered with us to bring Engaging Pittsburgh Innovative People Practice Awards, Thank you to all of you. And we'll see you all next year, hopefully in person. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Congrats.